Hi guys, it's Archivist here, today coming at you with a review for the PC version of Need for Speed Rivals. For me, reviewing driving games is a little tricky as I don't have a great deal of experience with the genre. The only two driving games that I have played properly are Forza 2 and Grid 2, both of which steer towards the simulation side of the spectrum. However, with Need for Speed Rivals, the game falls far more assuredly on the arcade side, offering intense gameplay that is perhaps lacking in terms of realism, but makes up for it by being exciting. The story of Rivals is, as you might expect, pretty much negligible. The basic premise is that you are either a cop chasing racers or a racer running away from cops. As you progress through the story, the culture of outrunning cops spreads across the internet and racers become increasingly notorious. There isn't much more else to say on the story, quite frankly it doesn't even need to be there. If you consider yourself a fan of ultra modern things, you might get a kick out of it, but all in all it's just an excuse to drive really fast. I can't really imagine too many people buying a racing game like Need for Speed expecting a deep and compelling story, so I suppose in that respect it doesn't disappoint. Like pretty much every Need for Speed before it, the basic idea is to beat your opponents in conventional races as well as outrunning cops that try to take you off the road by any means necessary. In Rivals you have two ways to play. You can either be a racer, whose job it is to drive really fast, defeat rivals and generally just speed through the open world like a maniac. On the other hand, you can play as a cop who has to take the racers off the road by slamming into them and using advanced pursuit technology. While it's fun to play as both sides, I personally prefer playing as a racer. A unique aspect that makes Rivals stand out amongst its contemporaries is that it is set in an open world. In order to initiate an event, you simply move up to it and press a button. It's pretty cool to have the game so smoothly integrated together. As you spend more time in the open world, you accumulate points which can be used to upgrade your car. The longer you stay in the world, the higher your score multiplier becomes. However, stay out too long and you risk being busted and losing all your points. It's a pretty cool system that forces you to quickly learn your limits. You will also see other players randomly driving about who you can challenge to a one-on-one -on -one if you want to test your skills. However, it is a little unbalanced considering it can simply come down to who has the better car. The driving physics of the game are tailored towards accessibility. Drifting around corners is relatively easy and braking is almost too responsive. Also, handbrake turns are incredibly simple to perform which can help in quickly turning the other way to escape pursuers. Lastly, with regards to gameplay, you are able to use special abilities that can give you an edge when racing. For example, one of my favourites is the Shockwave, which is great for disrupting opponents. The graphics of Need for Speed Rivals are excellent in some areas and yet definitely lacking in others. Cars look fine with textures being sharp, however, this isn't so much impressive as it is expected these days. The trees and general greenery surrounding the track are probably the best looking aspect of the game, which makes sense considering the open world is very rural. There is even a nice effect where the leaves will blow across the track as you speed down the road. The only issue with the actual graphics is that you do get some texture popping which typically affects the hillsides the most. In some areas it's completely unnoticeable but in others it becomes very distracting. While the game looks fairly average from a visual standpoint there is one massive problem with the PC version of the game which will be unforgivable for many performance enthusiasts. Need for Speed Rivals is locked to 30 frames per second by default. However, recently a fix was discovered that bypasses the developer's frame rate lock which involves making a fairly simple alteration to the game's script. I was incredibly relieved when I found this, but really the fact that this was implemented in the first place is bizarre. For what is essentially an open world game, Need for Speed Rivals is somewhat lacking when it comes to lasting appeal. Although you can keep coming back to events in order to try and improve your score, but unless you're a perfectionist, this will only keep your attention for so long. On a more positive note, the car customization is pretty good where you can paint the cars, paint the rims or even customise the licence plate. There are also a fair selection of cars to unlock, although not nearly as many as you will find in other games such as Forza or Gran Turismo. You can also upgrade each car with enhancements to durability, strength, control, acceleration and top speed. While this offers an incentive to specialise in a particular car, it does create an element of imbalance in a competitive environment. Need for Speed Rivals is quite simply underwhelming when compared to this autumn's lineup of AAA games. To say it is a bad game would be unfair, but it certainly isn't exceptional either. I think if the developers had a bit more time to iron out some of the graphical issues, this could have been a much better game. However, the gameplay in my opinion is very solid and this is definitely something to keep in mind. I would personally recommend waiting for a price drop, especially considering there are some better options out there right now. Taking all this into consideration, I award Need for Speed Rivals for PC a 7 out of 10. As always people thanks very much for watching and see you next time.